Hi. Alrighty. The five pillars for world class success. Now, we all are at a very high level already in our life, but I think there's a difference between good, great, and really world class. So, with your permission, I'd like to share 20 minutes with you to talk about world class. Okay. We have all the tools in the world. I certainly really enjoy I go to a lot of seminars, a lot of classes. Every time I see the tools again and I notice, I have to sharpen them, I have to clean them and reuse them. What I'd like to talk to you about is a little bit beyond these tools. And actually, they have to do with a question. And the question is this. What do oranges and speakers have in common? Could you please tell me, what do oranges and people who really speak very well professionally have in common? They're juicy. Thick skin. <laughs> what else? Well-rounded. Healthy. Fresh. Complexion. Pimple complexion. They grow and squeeze. You can squeeze them. They, of course, it's all true. I'll ask you several times. All your answers are completely true. And if you allow me, I'll add a little suggestion here and there. Now, what oranges and speakers have in common, when you squeeze them, whatever is inside will come out. So sailing in good weather is very easy. Sailing in stormy weather is something different. And all of us, when the conditions are perfect, it's easy. I love it when everything goes wrong, because that's the moment you can really share some things, what is really going on. Now, how do we achieve the greatest success as a speaker? Would you take 20 seconds to talk to the person next to you? What does it take to make you an excellent world-class speaker? Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. We've certainly said the most important thing so far. So scream it out loud quickly. What makes you a superb speaker? What does it take to get there as soon as you can? Focus. Good story. Authenticity. Expertise. Listen. Self-esteem. Health. Culture. Passion, voice, a happy audience. It's all, of course, true. And there's hundred more, and it's really, really true. So again, I say it for the second and the last time. I add a suggestion, which is just one more thought, but there are suggestions that came from quite a bit of research. Now, this I want to show to you. The best way to become a very successful speaker is by making others successful. And I've noticed in my own life, and I have a long way to go, Often you think, hey, I do a really good job. It doesn't mean anything, whatever I do, unless you find it of added value. So when we're, of course, we have to be in perfect shape. Of course, we have to have everything, whatever it takes. Of course, Philip Kotler's stories, right price, right product, right place, right promotion, right people around you. It's true, but it's only doing your homework. That's a hygiene factor. It's like going to the toilet and there's no towel or no toilet paper, right? So that has to be right. But there it only starts to be a world-class speaker. Who agrees with me on that, by the way? that you're only successful when you make others successful. And in a lot of people's minds, maybe not yours, but you might know people, that there's a little funny thing going on there. Now, there's 10 two-letter words that are so important. You know this, of course, huh? If it is to be, it is up to me. So you have to do the job. Now, this is a paradox for some people. So you're only successful when you make somebody else successful. But you first have to be really in a world-class perspective. Now, I don't know if you can share with me this experience. I've seen speakers, and I looked in the mirror quite a bit as well, who are too full of themselves, who need more experience, who definitely talk too much, not only on stage, but especially also off stage, who are very stubborn, and whether they really have the level of passion that have been talked about today quite a bit, they're not there yet. Do any of you know these kind of, these kind of speakers? Let me see. Okay. Any of you might sit very close to a chair, on a chair, where that's the case actually for you. Who knows? Okay, so. 
Stick with us. Let's put on a glasses that on the inside is yourself and on the outside is the world. I'd like to introduce you my darling parents. Hup, wonderful that you also shared something about your father. I primarily like to share 30 seconds about something about my mother. My parents survived the concentration camps. Not only them, still today, millions and millions of people are in concentration camps, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual. I have the blessing to be here. My mother has always had a big problem dealing with that situation. She left us two years ago, and I dedicate, one of the persons I dedicate my life to is specifically my mother, and they're listening as I'm talking here. Because what really drives me is to give the world, a lot of people, a menu card from which they can choose dishes they like to eat. To offer recipes that people can make themselves. Whether they do so is not up to me. But I think it's our responsibility to share these recipes with people. And I will certainly keep doing so. Now here, they will come. With this as a premise. So what is the most important thing in what you see here? The heart, the color, the money, it is what it is. So nothing has a meaning except the meaning you give to it. But whatever it is, if you have a, a big heart, it will turn into money and you will become an extraordinary person. But most of all, then you can do extraordinary services to others. And I like to stress the word extra. So these five pillars, I'll use these letters to make it even easier for you to remember them. Well, these are two extremely fine gentlemen, but there's many women like that, Mother Teresa, etc. So here's a man, Mahatma Gandhi, old man, hardly any clothing, speaks very soft, and he gets the key of a country. Why is that? He is not a man. Nelson Mandela, 26 years on Robben Island, comes back, and without even saying the words, everything in your spirit feels he is not judging himself or somebody else. He is full of unconditional love for others and himself, and he forgives others and himself. What do these people have in common that makes world-class people and world-class speakers? If we had more, more time, I would let you answer on this. So I leave it as a rhetorical question, but I ask the question so you think about it. And allow me to enjoy, to suggest this to you. What they do primarily is they put their ego into the refrigerator. That is a biggie, a huge one. You know, ego is a nice abbreviation for edging God out. That means there are people that think that they are the center of the universe. Well, you try it out. You'll find out. Yes, we are a ray of the sun, so we are the sun. We're a drop in the ocean, so we are the ocean. Ego also stands for everything good outside. Look at me. Well, how good are you inside and what are you spreading? So that's what this is about. If it's to be, it's up to me. But from a very humble perspective, if you will, there's a huge difference in this first pillar of world-class success between an ego and personality. Yes, you and I need to have a strong personality to deal with all the energies around you and to get your message across. But please put your ego into the refrigerator. Yes, we need stature, but not status. And by the way, both words mean exactly the same thing. They mean, here I stand, I'd like to go there, and what does it take to go there? But nobody cares what you have done. Of course it helps. It does help that for 17 years I've been running five international companies in this very solid corporate career. Of course it helps. This is my 20th year that I do this kind of work in coaching people, etc., etc. But what it's about is where do you stand and where do you want to go? I brought a little elastic band here. So if I'm here and I want to go there, what do I have to do with this hand? What do I have to do with today? This is today, this is tomorrow. Let go. And what happens then? It hurts. So no pain, no gain. No guts, no glory. But it's not really pain. But a lot of other people, what do they do? They say, I'm here. I like to go there. And they go, wow, that stretch is quite a bit. It's too much for me. So what do they do? They let go of tomorrow. And what happens then? It also hurts. Dear ladies, fine gentlemen, this is the ultimate no-brainer. If something takes a little effort anyway, you might as well go for it and get there, because then you're there. And if you don't do it, you feel sorry and sad for the rest of your life. You feel yourself a victim, and you're not going anywhere. 
Now in Holland, we have a statement that's called the polder model, which means the reclaimed land area. And I'll tell you, most people even in Holland don't know why it's called that way. It's called that way because when we in Holland reclaimed land, we took a, a proportion of all kinds of uh, a relative proportion from the, uh, from the population of Holland and put them together in a new piece of land to get a nice representation. Now, on the other hand, so we're the country with the most political parties in the world, actually. So we talk, we talk, we talk. And what do we do? So we say, we want to go there, and then what do we do? Well, I'm not sure yet. I like to think about it a little more. I'm going to call you back on this. Do you have a card? Yeah, let's contact. I, 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 that scenario, what's the advantage of the third scenario, by the way? It doesn't hurt. Do you ever get anywhere? No. So, to end of the first pillar of world-class success, know where you're going, of course. Take a lot of action, but do it from personality, do it from stature, know where you stand, know where you want to go, and then simply go there. That's pillar number one, the E from ego into the refrigerator. Pillar number two of world-class success. These fine gentlemen, Roger Federer and Michael Schumacher, you know, they're the best in their sports, and or they were. What they have in common is not only talent. Talent is important. All of us have talent. But do you automatically get to be the best you can be by just having talent? No, what does it take? Action and practice, practice, practice. We all know that it takes extreme effort, and it's called the 10,000-hour rule. The Williams sisters, when they were four years of age, they started playing tennis, had the best coaches every day, four hours a day, five days a week. It took them 10 years to do the first 10,000 hours. It's also with speakers. When they stand somewhere, you notice right away, the material might be the same, but the way it's delivered, from where it gets from, from where it sits at a cellular level, makes a huge, huge difference. It's like climbing the Mont Blanc. This is the easy route to the Mont Blanc. You don't walk up in one day. You need several stations. So it's important. These are just to make it very simple in the short time we have. Five eyes that make you very successful. Whatever you bring has to have an excellent input for your audience, so great content. If you're not interested in the other person, it definitely won't work. You need to do it in a way that inspires people. There needs to be interaction, and it's also with what intention do you do it. Because the product of the product is always something more than what you deliver. It's never about a speech you give or a, a presentation by a CEO. It's what's the next step. And if you ask five times through, you always get to happiness, peace of mind, abundance, clarity. That's actually why we do what we do. So if you want to have big impact, I invite you to score yourself on these five eyes and work on them and make an action plan on it. So please don't take any risk and work with people who do have the 10,000 hour rules. It doesn't have to take as long as many of us have taken in our lives to get somewhere. I do a lot of work with students. And <laughs> sometimes, you know, I don't work there for my personal power, I work more for my force, because I want them to learn so much, and of course it doesn't work. Because if they, if they're 10, 20, 30, sometimes even 40 years younger, if they would have known this stuff and practiced it, they would get there so much faster. So ask yourself the coming days and the rest of your life, why would you not work with the best? If you, you, you use coaches, if you go to seminars, whatever, go to the best, work with the best. That's the 10,000 hour rule, the second pillar of world-class success. Let's go to the third pillar. You know these fine people, I presume. Larry King, he stopped huh, two or three months ago. Uh, Becky Anderson and Piers Morgan. What is their, what is their profession? Anchors, and what do they specifically do? Ask questions. They're journalists, primarily. They ask questions. So here's the third pillar of world-class success. Talk less, ask more. Of course, in this particular context, there is a sort of a setting to talk quite a bit. Nevertheless, and you've noticed throughout the day, and it will continue this way, that a lot of the speakers, they actually ask a lot of questions. We have the, the time to to answer the question something else, but your mind gets opened more. And you get respected. If somebody asks you a question, you actually get respected to bring your own knowledge and expertise to the table. Now, why is it so difficult to ask questions? At least in this part of the world, in Europe, 
At school we learn how to write, how to read, how to talk a little bit, do all kinds of things, but asking questions is definitely not priority number one. On some schools even, it's not stimulated to ask questions. So how do you expect that we are very good in asking questions? And that refers back to pillar number two, it takes at least 10,000 hours of intensive training and exercise to be able to ask very good questions. Are you with me on that? So very good coaches, etc. they are excellent in asking very good questions. And what do we do? We focus, of course, on the pain. We focus on the needs. You, know, you and I, we're actually like a dentist. You know, Ooh, yucky, yucky. Huh? But a good dentist is it's so soft and so lovingly that you ow, all of a sudden you feel a little bit. And if the dentist then suggests, well, you can walk on like this, but you lose your teeth in three, uh, three years, or you can take the black filling, which is 85 euro, or you can take the white filling, which is 150 euro, and then you're all set for 10 years. We first have to get to the pain of people. So asking questions is not only a technique, it's honoring the other. Because if you start talking about whatever you have to share with the world, it's not the right thing that people need. Who can see that? So you, you have the best thing in the world, you don't understand it, others don't understand you, but if you don't ask them questions, it won't work. Let me see if anybody can identify with that. Okay, see some double hands even go up. So better questions, better answers. So don't just act interested, please be really interested. Because life is like a jukebox. Everybody has their own song, everybody plays their own song, and even if you play the same song, people hear different things. And this more, or earlier we got already a magic question. I'd like to share also one other magic question with you. Try this out. Don't believe a word I say, because it's only my experience in these years that I go around. But at least the people I've worked with, this works. Any conversation you start, give people a piece of paper and ask, what is the ideal outcome of our meeting? And magic will happen. Again, don't believe me. Do it. If they don't want to write it down, say, okay, let's take 20 seconds, think about it. And then let's just say, what is the ideal outcome of our meeting? Our dinner, our get together, our walk on the beach. People get focused, you get a magnet that people like to get pulled towards, and magic will happen. Try it out. Okay, that's the third pillar. Talk less, ask more. Let's go to the fourth. You know these fine gentlemen, I'm sure. Barack Obama and Walt Disney. Walt Disney, he dreamed. Barack Obama also dreamed. They both realized their dreams. However, Walt Disney, and I'm sure you know the story, he went to 102 different financial institutions, rich people, etc., before he got his first $100 to build his first uh, merry-go-round in Anaheim, California. Oh, Barack Obama, you remember? He became president five years ago. You remember that? Five years ago he became president? Huh? <laughs> so I always love this moment. Uh oh, so far it's not bad, you know. Five years ago, Barack Obama started his grassroots campaign, which made him president. And he had the luck, of course, that George Bush was there, otherwise it probably wouldn't have happened. But so both these guys, what they did, and here is the fourth pillar of world class success they requested help. So many of us find it difficult to ask for help. Asking questions is one thing. Asking for help is a completely different thing. World-class people, they ask for help. And they give help. They, they really, if they see something going wrong, they give help. But in a specific way, because it's so difficult. It's like the story of the caterpillar. You know the caterpillar goes, caterpillar, caterpillar. He keeps going, caterpillar, caterpillar. And the caterpillar doesn't like to be a caterpillar the rest of his life, right? You want to be a caterpillar the rest of your life? Probably not, huh? So one day the caterpillar becomes a cocoon. In the cocoon stage, not much happens. And one day, something very miraculous happens. And those wings start coming up, and he wants to fly away. And there's this one little silk thread withholding the, cat the caterpillar from flying away. And then somebody wants to help the caterpillar, gives help. And he cut through the silk thread. And can the butterfly then fly away? No. And why not? Please, scream. It's not strong enough yet. The caterpillar by itself has to push all the fluid into the wings and then, tack, when the wings are really full of fluid, then, in a natural way, the last 
silk thread will break and the caterpillar will fly away. And if you have children, who doesn't have children? Ever been a child? Okay, then you can identify with this one. Parents with the finest of intentions, and maybe with all the five eyes, good input, interested, <laughs> making interaction, having the right intention, etc., they give advice to a child. However, the child has not asked for the advice. Do most children take that advice very positively? That takes a little while ways to think in. It's interesting, huh? What would happen if you master the, uh, the art of asking questions, that you ask questions to your children, your children ask you a question back, and whatever advice you wanted to give to begin with is the answer to that question, and it will be accepted like a God's gift. Can you follow that? Isn't that interesting? So just not giving, just not giving help, because often it's forceful. I mean, an organization constantly, a manager or whatever, says, oh, I'll do it myself. And instead of developing people, they limit people. So the fourth pillar of world-class success is request help and give help. And here we go to the fifth one. What do these very special people have in common? Of course, by the way, all these world-class people, they have stamina, they keep going for it, they do all these things. But what they have in common, and you keep on hearing it in many different ways, what they have in common is they allow magic to happen. They really do what they do with heart and soul. Often we say team, you know that? Together everybody achieves more. That's just more of the same thing often. What would happen if we say together everybody achieves magic? And then a magic world will appear. So do what you do with heart and soul. Not only with heart and soul, but really with passion. And it's so easy to say these words. But you notice right away, if somebody tells a story, if there's not only passion behind it, if there is a deeper purpose behind it. If there's a deeper purpose behind it, these people have a certain radiation. They have a certain energy. You feel invited to deal with them. You might totally disagree, but you, you suck up the energy, you suck up the content. So please, and that's why we're here, always keep learning. So the fifth pillar is allow magic to happen. Now to round off, to say exactly in time, of course, let's look at this extra again. So the E stands for please put your ego into the refrigerator. The X stands for you might have to do an extreme effort, but you don't always have to do it yourself. Get the right people to support you. Get into a team with people. You, know, you don't have to be a certain age. You can at a very young age get the right people around you, the right masterminds, and you grow very fast, like this network we're here. Talk less, ask more, request help, and allow magic to happen. Now, I certainly hope words fail to express to you, but I certainly hope in these 19 and a half minutes, I've given you some warmth, I've given you some love, I've given you some fertilizer that your oranges may grow juicier and more wonderful and that the skin can come off and the real juice and fruit inside might come out. And may you do all the work you want to do. I thank you, bless you. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.